Okay, so I'm going to do a video on color, like, you know, how to pick colors, how to just color in general. And this is going to involve a lot of color theory, and it's just bits and pieces of color theory that I've picked up on over the years. So it's not all going to be there, but it's still some stuff, and I just hope the information might be helpful to a few people. Um... So first thing I do when I go to color is I pick out a solid color, just a color on top of. And for this, I think I'm going to use like a reddish orange. And I always like to make it more saturated. It, it, it'll it come together once I start talking about how to do all the other colors, but I'll choose like a background color first. Okay, that only took 12 years, but, um, okay. Now I'm going to start coloring the thing. Now, you want to keep, I'm, I'm using Psy, but, oh my gosh. Good thing I got all the time in the world, right? Okay, so I'm using Psy, and, you know, the layers, it's, it's paint tool Psy. But, um... If you're using this, or if, I don't know how to explain it for Photoshop, but um, I'm using this, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my um, background color on a different layer and my sketch that I did up on top. And I'm going to do a layer in the middle for my coloring. And what I like to use, I, I like to use a watercolor brush, you know, kind of, it lets the color seep through, like a very background color. Which is what we need it to do. Like, you can use any brush as long as it'll do that. You can use whatever brush you'd like. But here is where we want to find a reference image or two, just so we can get all the colors right. And you know how that is. You know, you just gotta find a um, reference image. And we are painting Endeavor today, so, um, you know. <laughs> but, um,. Yeah. So, like we got colors, you know, but they're not necessarily on the same scale as ours. Or like, oh, how do I say it? Different saturation levels. See how this is like really bright? It'd look kind of weird if we put it over this weird red color we got going. So, what we do is, now this is the color theory part. So here's your background color, right? Right here, we got it. And here's your background color. So, say you want to choose a blue. What you would do is go to your blue, like keep that spot right there where your background color is. And since it's halfway across the color spectrum here, what I do is I move the little spot over to like right here. And that'll give us a blue that fits into the I don't want to say palette, but it, it goes nice. Like that looks a whole lot better than this does. Like, that just doesn't look natural. <laughs> and you always want to let it bleed through a little so you can see the original color. But what we're, what we're doing here is we're using, I'm going to pick out the orange first. So, um, uh, we want to use a bright red orange. And you can move this however you want. You just want to find a picture you want. Picture, you want to find a color you want. Where am I? But, um, you can always ignore that rule a little. Like, since this is fire and it's going to be really bright, you know. You can ignore that rule a little for certain things that you want to pop out and like grab your attention. But see how I'm letting it like bleed through a little? That's what you want to do. It just helps it all blend together and, you know, helps with the colors. And now that I got that fundamental down, I'm just going to skip ahead so this video isn't like four hours long. And I'm just going to color this stuff. I'll just color the red so I can pick out more colors. Okay, so here we are. Colored in all my fire. Except for this. Okay. okay, now I colored in my fire. <laughs> but, um, okay. So, like, you can see how that goes background a little bit. I don't know how to explain it. Color theory's weird. This looks, looks like it belongs more than this does. Actually, you know, since it is supposed to pop out a little, here's what I'm going to do. Like, you can do this just to fix your colors a little bit. 
thank goodness for that uh, clipping group button, but I do this a lot to just, um, you know, because nobody gets their colors right on the first try. See, you can do that and just fix it a little bit. And this does actually look better than that. It's ignoring the color theory rule, but since it is supposed to pop out, you know, it's okay. It can't be perfect. I'm certainly not a perfect painter. I'm not perfect when it comes to picking out colors. So yeah, but you want to be careful here. Don't let this merge down onto the background layer quite yet. And here we are. I'm just going to pick out some more colors. So what you do is you take your background and you take, well, you want to lighten it or darken it, however you want. And I'm going to go ahead and do all the blood and stuff. And let's make it a little bit more towards the blue side. And I'm going to go get my watercolor again. And see how I'm doing this on a different layer just so it doesn't blend and get all gross. I'm actually going to do this above the fire layer. There you go. And the bigger your brush is, the more easier it'll be. Easier it'll be to, you know, keep it light like this. Because when you're doing it, when your brush is more of a smaller size, it's kind of hard. And, you know, you don't want to color everything solid, because that's what, like, like this way, it doesn't get all weird. You know what I'm saying? Because you want your background, very background, color to shine through. Well, not shine through, but you, you, I'm not good with words. <laughs> but hopefully everybody gets what I'm saying. But that's just what you gotta do. And you color in all your stuff. You get all that done, and, you know. You get there eventually. I hope this isn't confusing people when I say like background layer, because this this color isn't going to be the actual background. This is kind of like a guide for picking colors, I guess. But I just call it background color, or you know, things like that. And I'm just going to keep on coloring. And I did it on the wrong layer. Oh, why? <laughs> That'd be me. And another thing, this is just a little tip about art in general. When you're doing a sketch, you want to make it look, you don't want to do it too detailed, but you always want to make sure to um, know where all your stuff's at. Like this fire over here, I don't know what I was doing with that. I don't even know where I am <laughs> in this. I think this was actually just me here right there. But And you see these lines, you know, this is actually going to be like... I'm just, like the sketch, it did get a little bit complicated. So I did those just to be able to, you know, see where everything's at and, you know, you know what I'm saying. So I knew where to put all my colors. But I messed up on that, like right about here. Because I don't know what's hair, what's blood, what's fire, I don't know. <laughs> really don't. And we're just going to keep on coloring until we get done coloring. <laughs> so I'm just gonna pick out a skin color. And with skin colors, oh, I always see people doing this. Like, they'll pick a color like this. <laughs> that looks disgusting! Like, I always like to do it because I always think, like, there's so much... Like, when you look at skin, it's more of a pinkish than that. Like, this just... This right here, this... <laughs> Who looks like that? It's always over here in the reds for me. Like when I pick skin, doesn't that look a lot more alive than than like this does? Because I always see people using like the oranges. Ugh, it's the worst thing ever. But I actually do like this color. I just need to make it match up with all my stuff here. If possible. <laughs> uh, so it looks like it's going to be that. Okay, so I'm going to get out my watercolor brush again, or you can use, you know, like I said earlier, any brush that will let the color come through. And I'm, I think I'm going to have to go back and fix this color. I don't think it's dark enough. I don't really have a rule for figuring out how light and how dark color should be. Like, I don't have any advice for that, because I just, like, eyeball it. And I know that's not the best way to go about it, but that's what I do. And, yeah. Not the best thing to do. Hmm. 
It's all bad. So what you do is you keep going through until you got all your colors and you got them all nice and picked out and wonderful and not looking like that. <laughs> uh, see, this is where the reference images come in handy. <laughs> but I want them to look realer than that. Eh? You can't get everything from the reference images. Never can. All the colors in the world, and I cannot pick a single one that looks right. <laughs> but this is what we're going to do. We're going to color. It's going to be great. It's a coloring tutorial. And you always want to be looking at your reference images. Like, I could go through and color his costume, and then once I'd be done painting, I'd be like, Oh no, I got all the colors wrong. Yeah, your reference images exist, you know. And I think in this coloring tutorial, I'm going to show how I shade and how I um, go through and put all my layers once I got all my base colors picked out. So I'm just going to skip ahead to that. I'm going to be following the same rules as I just, you know, said. Um, I've been saying this whole time, actually, <laughs> with the color theory stuff. So I will be right back. Like what I, first I'm going to, you know, fix all these colors. I'm going to merge all these colors down onto that um, background color that I was talking about. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, what I do is the overlay tool. Huh, I would be nowhere without that. But that's how I um, help get a lot of my colors, like, that's just how I get all most of my colors to work, you know? Because this can help, like, bring all your colors together, give them, like, you know, some unity. But you never want really to use it too much. Like, you don't want to be doing this. <laughs> don't do that. But, like, if you're using it just a tiny bit like this, like, you can see that looks better, right? So that's something I usually end up doing with all my paintings. Or whatever you want to call these. But, um... Uh, Next, I'll do, like, you know, I'll make anything that I want to pop out, pop out, really. Like, I'll go over it with a really bright color that's pretty close to what color it is. Like this fire stuff. Well, it is fire. What do I, what do I mean fire stuff? <laughs> but, um, that's what I'll do. I'll go through. And this is why I never include this stuff in my speed paints, even though I've only done, like, two of them. <laughs> but this just takes forever. Because I... I usually give myself a lot of time to think over the colors, because that's the biggest part of most of the things I paint is the colors. Because I can paint as good as I want to, but if the colors aren't that good, then the whole thing's not that good. <laughs> and even his little stupid um, mustache. Um, you know, I do that. <clears throat> and for this, since it's fire, I can use luminosity. Boom! That's pretty cool. And what I like to do with a lot of these is if they have like a center point to them, like I wouldn't, I guess you could do this with anything, but just to draw your eyes to like the center of the actual thing. I do this a lot, but what I'll go through with is I have this nebula brush. I got it from, I can link it, I'll just link it in the description. I got it from a friend. It's really nice. Like, look at this. Can't really see it. Hang on. <laughs> like this. Oh my gosh, it's big. Sick. I don't use it for painting space, but... <laughs> I just use it kind of like a blur tool, but like less blur. <laughs> see, you know makes things a little bit better because you want your paintings to have texture like you've always seen that the overly blended paintings that just don't look good at all like i mean it's what a lot of beginners do like i wish someone could have told me all this stuff when i was very like i was beginning doing art because i'd probably be like what's his name mozart 
No. <laughs> Whoa, sorry. <laughs> but, you know, the, the bigger guy. You know, whatever his name is. But it'd probably be really good for him. That's a lot of things with, like, beginners, you know? It just takes experience to get to know these things and, you know, get to learn them. And I always make the mistake of not following my sketch lines, and then we got garbage. <laughs> it's all just garbage. It's all just... I mean, we are painting garbage, after all. And what I usually end up doing is, like, fixing this sketch layer. Like, you know, I'll go over it with colors that I want it to be. Like, you don't want this to be stark black like this, because that'll just mess up all your colors. Because, well, here's just a little fundamental, I guess. When you're shading, say you got, you got yellow, right? You never, ever want to do this. Ever. Like, I know this is supposed to be a coloring tutorial on my um thing I'm painting, but I'm just going to show everybody this. Just in case you don't know. Like, you never do that. Ever. Ever do this. No, no, no. That's a big no-no. <laughs> don't ever do that. Because <laughs> that's just... I get it if you want to have some really strong, like, really strong shadows. But here, I'm going to do it again. What you want to do is you want to take... Like, you can look this up online. Like, yellows, they go with red. Like, reds go with yellows and things like that. See, like, here, I'll do this. And you'll take this and you'll blend it. And... See, this isn't perfect, because... These colors aren't going well together at all. But, um, you guys get what I'm saying, right? And, you know, when you do this, you might even add a little bit of blue. I know that's what I do. Like, just a tiny bit of blue around in here. Just the teeniest tiny bit. See? Doesn't that look alive? <laughs> but, you see, like, this right here looks great. Ew. <laughs> looks great. Everybody wants that. Nobody wants this. <laughs> you. <laughs> oh, I cannot write in the color tool. But, um, also, if anyone wants to take any of my brushes, like, you know how you can see all this over here? You can, I don't care. <laughs> but, um, that's what you do. And you can do that individually with each color. Or, well, that's what I'm going to do with this. Well, that's what you could do with this, sorry. But, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through it with a dark blue because the base color is red. That's just what I'm going to do. Might be wrong, might not be the best decision. I'm not an expert, but this is just what I do. This is my little coloring tutorial for um, the year 2018. No telling how good I'm going to be by, like, you know, next year. Probably going to be just as bad. But, <laughs> you know, we can go through and do this and shade wherever we want. And we got to figure out a light source eventually. And I think my light source is going to come from below. And I'm probably going to go through and add different things for this. But I'm going to stop once I get done with the shading. Because I don't want to go too far. And I'm just going to use this dark blue and put them on the shade. Because that's going to go through and fix everything for me. Not everything, but you know. See? It'll fix some things. But you want to put in your shadows wherever you need them. Oh, I do not like that. That does not look good. We're going to do a separate layer for that. Ew. <laughs> but, um, you can do whatever you want with these. Like, shadows. It just depends on where you're putting your light source. Like, I'm doing mine from below, so. Mine not. Mine not. Mine may not be the same as everybody else's. So. Because a lot of people do their lighting from, like, above or from the side. I do like side lighting. That that stuff looks good. Uh, but you just go through and you just do whatever you're going to do. And another thing I want to mention, like, that I do with, um, 
my paintings is if I feel like I don't have enough texture in it because what I use is this little brush right here and here let me um so I'm just going to show you how it blends and stuff so we got these right let's make them a little bit more square so we got these two colors and here's my brush and it does this! Yay! It's like a blending brush. And I don't like doing that. I don't like doing straight lines. Like, I, when I'm painting, I mess with the blending and the persistence and the de, dilution. I don't know how to say that. And the density. I mess with all that a lot when I'm painting. But I always do like this effect because it always, it gives it a nice look. Like a nice blended look. That definitely looks better than this. <laughs> In my opinion, at least. Like, I just like the way it looks. It's interesting, right? But, you know, you just gotta experiment and figure out what looks good. Because it's your painting, every painting's different, every drawing's different, whatever you're using this for. And you just wanna go through and, you know, touch everything up and get all nice. And so we got the colors picked out, and I'm probably gonna paint this sometime eventually. Eventually. <laughs> But, and you don't want to go through and do all your details. Like, you don't want to be putting stars up here in the sky when you haven't even paint, painted the sky yet. A lot of people, like, I used to do that. It was terrible. Like, I would do that, and it just made me so sad because I'd go over it, and it just not look good. I also used to leave this layer black here, like, um, the sketch layer. I used to leave that as black. Oh my gosh, that was, <laughs> that made all my paintings look bad. Because you just can't blend when it's like that. I don't know how to say it, but it darkens all your colors like it did with that yellow and black little um, shading thing that I showed. Because nobody's perfect at choosing colors, especially not me. But I think these are some pretty good colors, and I think I might go ahead and show how I, um, you know, because you don't want to leave this black. So what I do is I'll find, you know, I'll go through over top of it with my clipping group on, and we'll choose some darker colors for this stuff, you know, darker than that. Because you don't want it to be solid black, because you're painting over this. See, like for the hair right here, that's what I'm doing. Because that's looking a lot better, right? And it fixes most of the problems. Oh, and another thing about color theory. So say we're starting off with this color, and we want to make it darker. We do not do this. <laughs> we the rule is, is the darker you're making your shadow, the more saturated it is. Well, that's my rule that I use. And the lighter it is, the less saturated. Here's your color wheel for Psy. You don't want to move up in a straight line like that. You want to see the lighter is up here, the darker is down here. You want to go like diagonal, like a graph. And, you know, you want to throw in other colors, like, if you're doing a red, you want to shade with blue colors, and you don't want to stay just on this color when you're doing that most of the time. You might want to move to a bluer. Or... See, I'm not the most perfect person in the world. Once I understand colors better, I will make another video that will be better at doing this. Better at explaining it. Because I just cannot. <laughs> cannot. <laughs> With what I know, it's been able to get me to do this, like right here. This doesn't look that bad, right? I mean, it's kind of terrible, but not that bad. I've seen, I've painted worse. <laughs> like, I got really, really bad paintings saved on my computer that I did back in like 2015, three years ago. See, if you practice enough, you'll improve. That's the deal here. But I'm just gonna go over this, all this black, so... I might want to keep some of it on the blood, because that's pretty dark, but... I'll just go over it. And... We'll go over all of it. With our color, and we might want to make it a little bit less. Because these colors are supposed to be dark, because they are on the edges. Well, for me, anyways. Your colors might not be like that. You might be doing some other type of shading, or... And I still haven't gone through and done, done all the, like, the lightness and the darkness and, and all the stuff you need to have a good painting. But, 
this is essentially what I do, and it does take a lot of time for me. I'm sure other people could get it done faster. But this is just what I do, and you know, I'll go through and I'll make sure I got all the blacks covered up and stuff, and the purples and the grays and anything else that would get in your way, really. And I have decided that I don't like the way his costume looks anymore. Uh, see, but I do have to admit, it's better to find these things while you're painting. I just don't want these to be th too thick here. And I want it to be a straight angle. I don't know what I was thinking before, but you know, probably wasn't even thinking. <laughs> but, here we go. Ta-da. And, you know, I'll go through once I start painting, start lightening and darkening things. But this is just my coloring process and how I do it. And, you know, I usually don't include it in speed paints, like I said earlier. Because this does take a while. And, you know, I'm gonna at, well, finally you'll merge down your, um, your sketch layer here. I did that on the sketch layer. But anyway, <laughs> it doesn't really matter because, you know. Like, I, I do this sometimes just to look at the colors. But here's your sketch layer. And you might want to lighten it up, darken it up. I'm just going to leave mine like that. And the final thing you want to do is merge that down so you have one layer. Because I always like to paint on one layer. I've seen people paint on multiple layers, and I have no idea how people do that. I just cannot do it. Because I can only do it on one layer, because most of my painting style, it's all mostly blending. And that's just how mine is. Everybody's is different. You know? Everybody paints different. But this was my little um, coloring tutorial. I hope it helped a few people out with um, colors and stuff. I'm not the sharpest spoon in the knife drawer, but <laughs> um, it's still got a tiny bit of helpful information in it, I hope. So, there you go. A little coloring tutorial. Bye-bye.